Very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the Wednesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Before we continue with the video, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you're a lover of all things weather, wanting to understand a little bit more about the big picture, why we're seeing the changes taking place now that's going to potentially deliver 30 or 31 Celsius uh, during the course of Saturday. Um, certainly likely to be on Friday, but also on Saturday as well before a frontal system moves in from the west. And then we see a change yet again. So this is a short, sharp burst of summer-like warmth. And it's mainly for the southeast, may I add. Up here across the north, we're flirting with 20 Celsius. It has hit 20 Celsius for a second day in a row here up at Marvogan Weather HQ in Edmonton, Rosshire. But it's actually down further south that we're seeing the heat building over the next few days before it gets kicked back out of the way once again. You can see here off the ECMWF, this is the, the 500 millibar geopotential heights and the anomalies. Uh, and looking at the North American view, and you can see essentially what is taking place over the next few days. So as we see heights build over the Western continent, we are seeing a robust jet stream exit North America. That is then seeing this air mass piling up against this high pressure system building. This winds up, then we draw that south to southwesterly wind allowing the temperatures to rise. Even across the north, we will climb into the low 20s for a day or two before the temperatures go back to the mid-teens once again during Saturday and Sunday. But you can see here, this is the situation um, as of 18 UT, 1800 UTC today. See that area of low pressure at the west between the UK and Greenland here. There's the above average heights extending from um, basically from northwest Africa up through the UK. So we've got that southerly flow and as we press through the next 24 hours or so, you notice here this trough digging southwards here. There's a ridge of high pressure building into the west. That then digs the trough southwards as the heights come up across to the east. And therefore, we have a southerly wind and some fairly warm air to contend with during Friday, Saturday. And then a cool down back to the low 20s, even in the southeast during the course of Sunday here. But as we play through, you notice here, that we start to change our the orientation of the upper pattern. This is say Sunday at day six zero six UTC, and you can see here the trough now digging in. We've got the a little bit of a, a, a west and northwest the component to the upper air flow, and then as we play through the course of next week here, you notice here we've got a temporary area of high pressure that builds in. Don't have a particularly warm air mass associated with that high may I add, so the temperatures are going to be close to average if not even slightly below average, but notice the flattening out of the flow as we move through the mid to late part of next week here. And therefore we are going to maintain this default setting that we've already seen. In other words, the uh, rather Atlantic westerly zonal flow that we've seen so much of during the month of July. But I also wanted to show you a couple of interesting tweets here. This is uh, by Neil Kay based at the Met Office. Showing for England, the central England temperature has been the second coldest first half to summer in the last 30 years, which is quite notable actually. Only 2012 competes with this year so far in terms of the first half of meteorological summer. Before that, you had to go all the way back to 1991 to have such a cool first half to a meteorological summer season. I thought that was an interesting one to show you in today's video i just wanted to show you another couple of interesting things not much in the way of lightning activity across the majority of the uk thanks to stable oceanic air uh, we have seen some lightning activity across parts of eastern scotland especially over the high ground and then some over england and wales as you'd expect in fact there's actually literally nothing over wales if you notice over the bristol channel and to the southwest of pembrokeshire ireland there's one lone uh, orange dot there which just shows you, because I think back in June last year, it was an incredibly thundery June. This time around, there has been very, very little. But look at Europe. That is bonkers. That is the lightning activity over the European continent here. Now, I'm trying to think what this time frame is, actually. This is a tweet here by London and Southeast Weather. But really is bonkers, the amount of thunderstorm and lightning activity that has been affecting almost all areas of the continent. Another interesting one here is sea surface temperatures over the west, central, and eastern Mediterranean basin. 
This is uh, surrounding the uh, Iberian Peninsula. You can see here temperatures in the low 20s down into the, the southeast corner of Biscay here. We've got some cool waters at 15 Celsius uh, on the northwest coast of Spain here. And uh, then obviously as you get into the western Mediterranean basin, we've got temperatures into the 25, 26 Celsius range. Now, as we look towards the central portion of the uh, of the central Mediterranean, we actually have close to record breaking water temperatures. I believe there was a, a temperature close to 30 Celsius measured just off Croatia, and that was the warmest sea surface temperature ever recorded, I believe, off the Croatian coast. Uh, I would need to pull that tweet up. I've seen it, but I haven't, I, I, I haven't actually retweeted it. But uh, that's quite an interesting stat. But you see here, quite widespread, 28, 29 Celsius surrounding Italy here. So obviously we've had incredible persistency of hot conditions here. Obviously the middle of summer is hot in this region as well anyway, but it's been even more extreme than, than normal. And you can see here a few 30s showing up just to the southwest of, of Turkey here as well. So sea surface temperatures are very, very warm in this, particularly the central and eastern Mediterranean basin. Another interesting tweet here uh, showing that uh, if you connect the relative, relatively coldest areas of southeastern England with southeastern Hungary, with a straight line, the temperature deviations in the first half of July range from minus four to approximately plus six above average here. So some very cold anomalies, obviously, over uh, southeastern England and the majority of the UK through the first half of July. But we're also seeing temperatures running a full six Celsius above the average in southeastern areas of the continent. So uh, so rather interesting stuff. This is another interesting one here. This is a uh, Aidan McGivern of the Met Office's tweet here from either yesterday or the day before showing that the first image is of the last 12 months with regards to the pressure anomaly. Uh, so this is the period here between the 1st of July 2023 and the 30th of June 2024. So this is a 12 month period and this is the last 12 months over the continent in terms of uh, atmospheric pressure, sea level pressure, that is. The previous 12 months here shows this here. So this is the period between the 1st of, 1st of July and the 30th of June 2021 to 2022. And it's almost the opposite taking place. So this is the difference in the last 12 months versus the previous 12 months, the year before that. And I thought it just shows you the variability in our weather pattern depending on El Nino, La Nina, sea surface temperature profile and the fluctuations, etc., etc. Just shows you, even last year, last June had a marine heat wave surrounding the UK. No such marine heat wave this time around. And look at the difference that we're seeing going from a record warm June last year to a slightly below average June this year. And uh, July is obviously running quite anomalously below average so far. Now, uh, obviously with the Pacific, um, with the Atlantic shutting down within the tropics, we are likely to see the West Pacific r uh, ramp up with the uh, typhoon activity. But at this moment in time, we are seeing some fairly quiet activity, even in the West Pacific here. I think it's only the second year or third time since 1950 we've had such a quiet start to the west pacific typhoon season back to the uk here rainfall wise here this is the anomaly through the 14th of july in terms of uh, moisture levels we've got the uh, loftus on the uh, uh, yorkshire coast actually sitting at 237 percent of average july rainfall even fivey castle in aberdeenshire 120 percent but then as you get further west and northwest over the UK, it is actually a drier than average July so far. Certainly can vouch for that here, up here in the north of Scotland. We've had a less wet July compared to last year, but we do have rain in the forecast, so that may change. Even down in Exeter, we're seeing over a month's worth of rain through the first 14 days. North Holt, Greater London area, seeing uh, over 50% um, more than the July average we're only on, on the first 14 days of the month. So pretty pretty soggy stuff, actually. It has been a very, very wet July, especially across more southern areas of the UK here. And let me just skip through here to see if there's any other interesting 
tweet to show you. Can't really see much. So let's have a look and see at the uh, current temperatures across the uh, across the UK, Ireland, and also the rest of Europe uh, to speak about too. So just bear with me a little second here. These are the current sea surface temperatures, by the way, surrounding the UK at the moment here. So uh, I believe they're running close to average in a few spots in the south, but they below average across the north. So these are the current temperatures across the UK at the moment. So we do have upper teens, low 20s in the north. We've got the low 20s in the central belt. And then as you progress south, we are seeing temperatures reach the mid 20s in a couple of spots here. Temperatures will continue to rise tomorrow. We're likely to see the first 28 Celsius of July, and then we will see uh, a run at 30 both Friday and Saturday. So the far southeast of the UK is likely to creep into heat wave criteria, but elsewhere, really from about the what the Midlands northwards, we are staying below heat wave criteria. Obviously, the majority of the UK is 25 or above for three consecutive days. Once you get between Birmingham and London, it's between 27 and 28 over a three-day span to constitute a, the definition of a heat wave. And it looks as if it's only going to be really the southeast corner of the UK that will reach heat wave criteria. And again, this is similar to what we've seen back in the month of June, uh, as alluded to in, uh, in yesterday's video. Looking at the temperatures across the continent here, pretty warm across many areas, particularly across the south of Spain and also south and east Europe continues to see some remarkably warm conditions finally let's have a look and see what the gfs extended is looking like this is the upcoming seven day period and you can see here that we have got a ridge trough ridge zonal flat uh, pattern to speak about here we've got quite a strong ridge of high pressure extending up through canada with a trough over the uh, north pacific we've got a trough on the east coast of canada as well We've also got a, a weakness in the central plain states here, heat in the east, heat in the west, and uh, we've got the uh, slightly fresh conditions in the central area of, uh, of the United States here. But we've got this very similar situation that we've had already. So you've got this trough stretched out, very flat natured, by the way, uh, over the next seven days, extending this trough from Quebec to the northern UK. There's the uh, ridge to the south of that and in between we've got a fairly strong jet stream continuing to drive atlantic air into the uk pattern so let's look at the uh, europe specifically and you can see this is the uh, the mean uh, upper air pattern should i say let's have a look at the upcoming seven days according to the mean sea level pressure it looks like this here so relatively low heights across the majority of the uk and ireland with a bullseye just to the south of iceland Precipitation wise, well, it would be no surprise that we have a wetter north, drier south scenario across the UK. And we are also seeing drier than average conditions across the majority of the continent as well, which I'm sure many folks here will be pleased to see. Temperature anomaly here for the upcoming seven days looks like this here. So we actually are running average to slightly below average. This takes out to Tuesday the 23rd. The following uh, seven days here so the 7 to 14 day looks like this here so yeah this takes all the way to the third 30th of july and we know what july is looking like so far so i'll leave it with uh, with you with that like share and subscribe and i'll try and have a look at some of the longer range stuff including august autumn and even winter hopefully in tomorrow's video so stay tuned for that and I hope hopefully that will encourage you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. So enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and I'll see you all being well tomorrow with more. Bye for now.